Hi there. In the next two lectures, I'm going to discuss simple motions of structures, which can be modeled by means of what is called a single degree of freedom system and a two degrees of freedom system. Uh, the lecture consists of two modules. Lecture 2.1, which I'm going to talk about today, introduces the fundamentals of structural dynamics, employing a single degree of freedom system as the most basic model of a building. The next lecture, Lecture 2.2, introduces the energy dissipation into the model and expands the considerations to two degrees of freedom model of a building. Let me first explain what a single degree of freedom system is. In simple words, it is a system that can move in one direction only. It can either translate along a line, as the left animation shows here, or rotate around the pivot as the pendulum at the right of the slide does. The small tilting motion of a residential house sketched in this slide can be modeled by means of a single degree of freedom system that moves horizontally, as you see here. The main characteristics of this system are its mass and stiffness. What mass is, you know, and the stiffness can be measured by pushing the house at the roof level and then recording the resulting displacement at the same level, as you can see here as well. The ratio of the pushing force to the resulting displacement is the stiffness of the structure. This stiffness can also be identified from vibration of the house excited by passing by, by vehicle or any other dynamic environmental loads, as we quite often do. I mentioned the word vibration. What is it? It is a repetitive periodic motion as the animation at the right of this slide shows. It can be excited by, for example, knocking on the structure by a hammer or by a wind gust. One of the main characteristics of this vibration is its frequency. It tells us how fast the move, the mass, completes one period of its motion from left to right and back. Below the animation that you see here, you can also see the expression for the no natural frequency of vibration of the mass spring system. This frequency is called the natural frequency because the system performs vibration at this frequency in the absence of any external force. Therefore, it can be said that it is natural for the system to vibrate at this frequency. The frequency of natural, or as we normally call it, free vibration, is the larger, the smaller the mass, and or the larger the stiffness of the building. Therefore, as you can see here as well, light and stiff structures shown in the left upper corner vibrate fast, whereas the massive and soft structures in the lower right corner of the slide vibrate slower. That's important to remember. Earthquakes, which are the focus of this course, last of quite some time, and therefore houses and other structures sub subject to earthquakes do not perform free vibrations. They move under a continuous action of the shaking ground. The movie shown in this slide gives a feeling actually on how of how a small model scale house moves under horizontal motion of its base, which represents in this small scale experiment the ground motion. In the experiment shown in the movie, we do not reproduce the realistic motion of the ground, which is quite complex, as you may know, but we show how the house responds to a sinusoidal motion of its base that takes place at different frequencies. I hope it's clear from the movie that the house tends to vibrate at the frequency of the base. So the base vibrates, the house takes the same frequency. 
Such vibrations are called forced vibrations. It is obvious that the response of the house strongly depends on the frequency of the base motion. That's the main learning of this slide. The motion of the structure caused by the base motion can be understood in terms of its displacement with respect to a fixed, not moving with the ground point, somewhere at a satellite, for example, or with respect to the moving base. The equations of motion, which are a mathematical representation of the known to you second law of Newton, are shown in this slide both in terms of the displacement of the structure with respect to a fixed point and in terms of the relative to the base displacement. The equation of motion in terms of the relative displacement tells us, you see the term on the right hand side, that the structure is forced to move due to the acceleration of the base. That's what moves the house. As we saw in the movie a minute ago, the motion of the structure caused by the moving base strongly really depends on the frequency of the base. It is of importance whether the frequency of the base motion is larger or smaller than the natural frequency of the structure. When the frequency, omega I call it in the slides, of the base motion is smaller than the natural frequency which I call omega sub zero, the structure and the base vibrate, as we, can, as we call it, in phase. As the left animation shows in this case, the motions of the structure and the base are co-directed, move in one and the same direction simultaneously. In contrast, when omega is larger than omega sub zero, the motions are counter-directed, that is, the structure and the base move in antiphase. In order to oversee the full picture of the dependence of the motion of the structure on the frequency of the base motion, it is really instrumental to look at the graphs shown in this slide. The left graph shows the so-called dynamic amplification factor. It tells us how much larger the maximum deflection of the structure will be then the static deflection under the force of the same magnitude and that of course depends on the ratio of the frequency of the base motion and the natural frequency. The right graph in this slide shows the phase difference or as we call it phase lag between the motion of the structure and the base. Zero phase lag, as we see in the beginning of the graph, means that the motions are co-directed. Where, whereas the lag of 180 degrees means that the motions are counter-directed. Let us take a closer look at the dynamic amplification graph at the left. This graph is of paramount really importance for understanding of the dynamic response of the structure you can see that the dynamic amplification factor can be very large when the frequency of the base vibration gets close to the natural frequency of the structure. Let us look at a movie of a lab scale experiment which will help us understand the graphs better. The graphs, I mean the dynamic amplification factor and the phase lag. It can be clearly seen, I hope, that by increasing frequency of the base motion of the structure, the response first grows when we increase the frequency, and then, uh, having gone to really big responses, then decays. We also can see that at a certain frequency of the base excitation, the be response becomes really violent. Well, this violent response is the most dangerous for the structure regime, of course, and it takes place when the frequency of the base motion coincides with the natural frequency of the structure. We saw in the movie, just a second ago, that uh, this leads to a significant indeed amplification of the response of the structure. This phenomenon, very important one, is called 
resonance. Well, however one might doubt this graph I showed to you, and should actually doubt whether the infinite amplification predicted by this graph, by this figure, is realistic. The predicted infinite amplification is, of course, unrealistic. And it is a consequence of our, once again, unrealistic assumption that no dissipation of energy takes place in the structure when it vibrates. We will introduce such dissipation in the next lecture. Before moving to the letter, though, I would like to summarize the main concepts discussed so far. We discussed the main mechanical properties of the structures being their mass and stiffness. These two properties define the natural frequencies of the structure and thereby tell us what motion of the base will cause resonance. The resonance, we also learned what it is. It is a significant amplification of the response of the structure that takes place when the frequency of excitation gets close to one of the natural frequencies of the structure. We will come back to this key dynamic phenomenon in the next module. Now it's the time to thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you at the next lecture.